Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed? Are you ready to battle? <laughs> and the fight's on. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live military training in preparation for the next move of God. Strategies from heaven. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1. Thank you, Master. Glory, glory, glory. Now the Word of God says that the heavenlies are taken by force. Amen? And the violent take it by force. So the violent doesn't mean that the person's violent. It means aggressive. Is everybody with me? Everyone say aggressive. Aggressive. You know, one of the things the Lord had shared with me about the anointing is that's releasing more and more is becoming more and more aggressive. People are becoming more bolder. Soon they'll be ripping off those masks, I hope. And they'll remove the wimp and get bold. But in this ag aggressive anointing, in this aggressive, one of the things that God is trying to bring us to in this area is to become more aggressive, even in worship. More aggressive in your prayer. More aggressive. Not just, you know, there's a time to lay back when God's doing something. But we're to be first strikers. We're to be aggressive warriors and taking the heavens by force. Because if you don't take it, they're going to take you. Amen? And right now, we've got it. We call them this aggressive warfare. We must come into a place where there's aggressive warfare. And we say, I'm not taking no more garbage from the enemy. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Let's speak it out. This charge I commit to you, son of Timothy, according to the what? Prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the what? Good warfare, or what I want to say, aggressive warfare. Having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith, has suffered shipwreck, of whom are... Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. That's pretty powerful. Good warfare is aggressive warfare, not idle. There's no such thing as warfare to be idle. It's aggressive. Amen? It's to drive out the unseen enemies that influence the thoughts of the carnal mind. And these thoughts of the enemy, they promote an anti-Christ agenda. So you got to understand something. If you're not casting down these thoughts, that those spirits are promoting an anti-Christ agenda, which we know is rebellion towards God. Amen? Double-mindedness and everything else. Remember, our battle is an unseen battle. Amen? So we've got to become more aggressive. We've got to become more discerning and more alert so that when these voices, I mean, to be honest with you, we are battling over voices. You know how I many people are bound by voices on our medication? Many. We get calls all the time about people battling voices that are on medication, not realizing a medication is promoting those voices. And I think they're getting free from the, med from the voices by med I mean, when people go out, they're out using. What are they trying to do? Avoid the voice. Amen? They get stupid, drunk, and everything else. So try to avoid the voices. Guilt, shame, condemnation. Amen? So right now, we are in a time where God is saying, look it. I want you to become more aggressive in warfare. 
Why? Because I want you to drive out the unseen enemies that influence the thoughts of the carnal mind that promote an anti-Christ agenda. Look at all of these individuals that are out there. Can you lower this just a little? That are out there that are in the political arena. Look at how much anti-Christ. They don't even care. There's no fear, no reverence of God at all. None. They say what they want. They lie. They cheat. There's no reverence to God at all. But you and I got to become more aggressive. Remember, we're not fighting flesh and blood. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Aggressive warfare. Aggressive warfare. Verse 1. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace which is the plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men or women who are able to teach others also. In other words, transfer. Spread it. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? According to the rules. The hardworking farmer must first be to partake of the crops. Consider what I say to you. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. In other words, he's saying, look at, as a soldier, you must endure and you must maintain an aggressive warfare, avoiding affairs that influence the life of Christ in us. We must avoid those things that will try to distract us from the life of Christ. Amen? There is a, an aggressive warfare. There's an order that must be maintained in warfare. There's an order that is maintained in warfare. Does everybody understand? I'm going to talk about that order. It's called deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. <laughs> because if you're not denying yourself, <laughs> you're going to get your butt kicked. Because if you're not denying yourself, you're in the flesh, and you are a blimp beeping, beeping, beeping on the enemy's radar because they follow the flesh. In Matthew 16. Fears that influence the, that influence the promotion of the life of Christ. In Matthew 16, 24. To be in an aggressive warfare, there's first an order that is maintained in warfare. In verse 24. And Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his sword or his cross, and do what? Follow. So anyway, this is the area. So many people are trying to warfare when they're still not denying themselves. This is an order of, of, of the warriors in this life of warfare. Deny yourself, fight, and follow. Now, there are three attributes that we have talked about before. In other words, we're called to battle, right? Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to what? Infiltrate the world system. So these are a part of your and my everyday life as a soldier in an aggressive warfare. Aggressive. There's not enough aggressive warfare going on, or we'd be winning more battles. 
There are people doing warfare, but that's really not into it. They just do it to do it. But there's no sight. There's no target. There's no strategy. Oh, I just bind all the powers of darkness, Lord. Yeah. That's nice. What are you binding, homie? What are you doing? What are you targeting? What's the strategy? Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Not enough aggressive. You know, people just do general prayers. Instead of targeting, targeting, targeting. And then their voice comes back up and attacks them. And they're blaming God for not removing that voice when it's our responsibility to remove it. Ours as an individual. This is our temple. This is the temple of the living God. We are responsible of keeping this temple and kicking out every voice. It's our responsibility. Amen? 1 Peter ch chapter 5. First Peter 5, verse 8. Is everybody okay? Aggressive. Aggressive. You know, kick in the doors, man. Quit wimping out. You send something, go to the mirror. Amen? What's in your mirror? The Word says He's in us is greater than He's in the world. The world says, if God be with us, who can be against us? People do not believe the word. They believe their feelings more than they do the word. Verse 2. No, verse 8, I'm sorry. First Pete chapter 5, verse 8. Let's speak it. Be what? Be what? What's sober mean? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. So we need to be alert and consistent. This is called discipline. Now there's a special word in discipline. It's called disciple. Hello. See, people call themselves disciples, but they're not disciplined. They're not consistent. They're not alert. They're not aggressive enough. They're not aggressive in their worship, their prayers. They're not aggressive enough. And seeking the Lord, they're not aggressive enough. And they're not aggressive enough in warfare. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. See, when a devil shows up, we're not to run, we're to attack. Many people run. They've been watching too many Fright Night flicks, you know. It says here, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have been trained, which is called suffering, a while. <laughs> may you be perfected, established, strengthened, and settle you so you don't wimp out and run, but you become alert, consistent, and aggressive. <laughs> Remember, we're called to battle the unseen. Amen? You know, one of the things, that we are always escaping the temporary reality into the eternal reality. See, if you don't drive out the enemy, he's going to keep you in this reality all the time. Amen? This is a temporary reality. There's an eternal reality. That's why we cross over. But you're not going to cross over without a battle. You're not going to cross over without a fight. You're not going to cross over unless you're aggressive. Hallelujah. And again, remember, the sufferings are our challenges. They're training. They perfect us, establish, and strengthen us until it becomes an everyday part of your life where you are aggressive and not a wimp. Amen? You're not led by your feelings. You're not a man pleaser. You're a God pleaser. Nothing should move you. Everything should move from you. 2 Corinthians 10. The problem is because the enemy knows when a person is still in the flesh. You can't win any battles in the flesh. 
I've been casting out. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Well, you're in the flesh. I just heard three eyes. Remember, the enemy always brings you to you to get your focus off the Lord. Second Corinthians ten four. Everybody at ten four? Are you connected? <laughs> Roger that. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> What's verse 4 say? <laughs> For the what? Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, physical, but they're what? Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity. Listen, you're bringing every thought into captivity for what? You're discerning it. You're seeing whether it's of God or not. Who told me that? Where are you from, homie? Where's that voice from? Am I going to allow that voice to linger or am I going to get rid of it? Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. Look at, there are major weapons. His name, his word, and his blood. Amen? And it's got to be backed by the anointing. It's not physical. It's not natural. It's spiritual. It's supernatural. Amen? By driving out voices of the Antichrist that argue in your mind, in your thoughts. He said, you know, the fulfillment of obedience <laughs> is not to get caught up in the argument. Amen? It's acknowledge it and remove it. And we must be aggressive. And it's fulfilled in the order of warfare, which is to what? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, follow. You don't win battles in the flesh. People are still trying to fight in the spirit, in the flesh. It doesn't work. We must be aggressive in the spirit. That's why you must be aggressive to connect with the Lord in prayer, in worship. You know, there's not enough warfare in an individual's life. They just take everything nonchalantly. They don't realize. They're, they allow their feelings to dictate decisions. And you can't do that. Ephesians 6. Aggressive warfare. If you hear the word say, if you hear the voice say you're okay, you better battle quick. I'm okay. <laughs> Ephesians 6.10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. There it is. Are those things seen or unseen? Unseen. Therefore, take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You know, I get a lot of Christians that come across my path. Most of them don't even know about the full armor of God. What's the full armor of God? I like to go quiz Christians. What's the full armor of God? Oh, uh, I don't know. You know, his blood, his. They're not, they're not in warfare then. They're not soldiers. You don't know the full armor of God by now? You're in trouble. Amen? The full armor of God. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the what? Truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the voice of the strangers. 
or the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit or what? Tongues. The armor is the garment of a warrior. Amen? It's the garment of a warrior. They know, they follow, they tell the truth. <laughs> They're seekers of righteousness of God. Their heart desires to please God. They know the words of Christ and connect it to the eternal future by faith that resists the voices of deception. Hallelujah. Their minds are set on things that are above, making the unseen seen. They release the words of Christ backed by the anointing, praying in tongues. And they're always waiting to receive strategies of ways of attack. See, God will show you your enemy if you're paying attention. As a warrior of Christ Jesus, dressed with the full armor of God, we stand on the rock of the anointing and a secure foundation. We stand on the rock of the anointing and the secure foundation. Why? Because we are aggressive. Isaiah 61. There's something that's about being aggressive warfare. There's righteous anger involved. There's righteous what? Anger. Not fleshly anger. There's a righteous anger. Why? Because you're battling for the kingdom. You're not battling for you. Amen? Because what's affecting you is affecting the kingdom. So you're battling to remove and take land, take possession, take air, take space. Because if you're not taking the space, it's taking you. Does everybody get this? We battle to drive out and take possession. We take possession of places, land, space. We take possession of our, our homes, things that we own, so the enemy can't attack and get into those things. Every day I break curses off of stuff that gets brought on our campus because people don't even know they're bringing them on. And again, that's aggressive warfare. Hey, do you pray over stuff that you purchase? You should. Anything you buy, you should break every curse off. I don't care if it looks right or not. Anything you bring in your home, you should break a curse off. You don't know what's been prayed over. You don't know where it came from. You don't know the source of anything that material has been made of. Everything should be broke. Anything. And that's the thing. You just go to the Lord. Anything that's brought in my home and my possessions or anything that's under cursed, I break that off right now and cast that spirit out and send it to the pit in Jesus' name. Cleanse it with the blood and seal it with the anointing. Aggressive. Keeping things clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Let's speak it. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. The anointing. We have been anointed for this purpose so that you and I can be aggressive. Listen, Jesus was aggressive. People don't realize it. He didn't take no garbage. He was aggressive. He went into places, sat with sinners, sat with drunkards, sat with everyone. What did he do? He told them the truth. He was aggressive. 
He infiltrated so many places. And you and I can do that right from your war room. You can infiltrate places because we now are anointed. We have access. We're seated in heavenly places. You can access anything in the universe and beyond. And what is the anointing? It's the presence and power and truth of God Almighty. Amen. Acts chapter 10. Do you have to feel the anointed to be anointed? <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts 10.37. Aggressive warfare. Let's speak at that word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power and went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by who? The devil. For God was what? With him. They were oppressed by the devil. Let me tell you, the anointing is what drives out the enemy. If the word of God is not begged by the anointing, ain't nothing going to happen. It's like throwing seeds instead of a sword. You and I carry that same anointing. As long as we're right with God and everything is in order. As long as you're not in the flesh. Amen. 1 John chapter 2. Glory. Aggressive anointing. See, there's a time to seek the Lord's face. Amen. And then there's a time to be aggressive anointing. Aggressive in warfare. So you seek the Lord's face. He, you connect. And you know what he tells you? Go. Go fight. Go. But you got to connect first. First John chapter 2 verse 18. Let's speak it. Little children, it is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know, you, you know all things through the anointing. In verse 26, these things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Anointing for aggressive warfare. The anointing is for aggressive warfare. You know, the anointing isn't just to, you know, do things physically. The anointing is for spiritual warfare. In Psalm 18. Aggressive. It doesn't mean while you're warfaring you go punch holes in a wall and kick the door in and <laughs> scream. You don't have to do any of that. You're just aggressive. You're consistent. Amen? You don't quit. You don't wimp out. Ooh. He chased the varmints. Verse 27. 
Verse 37. 1837. Let's speak it. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Till they were what? Destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies, so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt into the streets. Heth, I would call that an aggressive anointing. Aggressive warfare. Amen. <laughs> Go to, uh, go to verse 1. How does he start this? He says to him what? I love you, O Lord, my what? Strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my what? Deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. He declares that. Then he goes to warfare. Is everybody okay? Does everybody understand what's going on? I mean, we need to be aggressive, man. We become aggressive Friday nights. We become aggressive in worship. Aggressive is push. Go. Chase. Don't quit. Don't wimp out. Keep the same level. Amen? So many people start off strong and go, and they wimp out. Stay strong to the end. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter six, verse three. Hallelujah. Aggressive warfare. Everybody there? Let's speak it. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he's proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such, withdraw yourself. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, all man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent and the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Simple message, aggressive warfare. If you're not there yet, get there. Amen. Get there. 
That's why God is pouring out an aggressive anointing now. Things are moving faster. Even though it seems like things aren't happening, but they're happening behind closed doors. Much faster than what you realize. There are people being arrested. There's a lot of things that are going on. Amen. I mean, you see, people don't even realize what's going on. But there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind closed doors. And you and I can assist in that by being aggressive warfare. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that you seal this tonight with the Holy Spirit so that we may be more aggressive in warfare, chasing our enemies down, driving out every voice, every presence of evil, every emotional attachment, every guilt and condemnation, driving it out so that our eyes are not on us, but they are on you to make place for your presence, for your glory, and for your love on this realm in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug on your way out. Tell them you did it.